Drum roll. Welcome to another edition of Gethsemane. It's so good to have you here uh, in this session uh, as we dive into God's word as a community. I want to thank you once again for tuning in and definitely pray uh, that you have been blessed on this uh, on this week. Uh, I pray that your hearts will be open and your minds will be open to study God's word on today. Uh, I believe we have a good subject, uh, a necessary subject, a subject that we always need to review and make sure uh, that we're in alignment with because there's so much at stake with it. We'll open up with a word of prayer uh, and then we'll dive into our lesson uh, on today. Let us pray. Father in heaven, we thank you for your blessings. Bless us, Father, as we uh, prepare to study your word. Give us understanding. Give us enlightenment. And bless us, dear Father, that we may be able to see the things uh, that you want us to see in your word. Strengthen us, dear Father. In your name we pray. Amen. So on our lesson on today, can you please break down forgiveness? Can you please break down forgiveness? So on today, we're going to be talking about forgiveness. We're going to be talking about the benefits of forgiveness. We're going to talk about what God requires. And hopefully we'll be able to deal and talk about some matters of the heart uh, as well as we go through this. And so I want to do this and I want to break this down uh, into four areas. I want to talk about four areas of forgiveness. All right. So for those of you who are taking notes, I want to talk about four areas of forgiveness. Before we dive in, I want you to hit that like button. I want you to hit that share button. I want you to be able to share this message and deliver this message to anyone that you feel may be blessed by this. I also want to thank all of those who invest uh, in this ministry and those of you who sow your seeds, uh, your offerings, your giving, your support for this ministry, your funds allow us to continue to spread the gospel. They allow us to be able to tell uh, and talk about Jesus Christ to the four corners of the world. So I want to thank each and every one of you who week in and week out, uh, you take what God has blessed you with and you sow into this ministry. I believe if this is a blessing unto you, uh, then thank you for taking the time to pour back into that. That allows us to keep doing that. Uh, some people receive and they take. There are some people who receive and then they give back uh, and blessings flow from that. So thank you. Uh, I, I, I don't want to uh, downplay how important that is. Thank each and every one of you who sow into this ministry. And so uh, as we dive into forgiveness, I want to deal with these four areas. I want to deal with these four areas. The first scripture uh, that I want us to look at, the scripture that I want us to look at uh, on today is Isaiah chapter 55. Isaiah chapter 55, and I just want to look at one verse. Isaiah chapter 55 and verse 7. Let the wicked forsake his way and the unrighteous man his thoughts. Let him return unto the Lord and he will have mercy upon him and to our God for he will abundantly pardon. Number one, the reason why forgiveness is so important is in order to be saved. You have to receive it. So I want you to follow me. In order for anybody to be saved, you have to receive forgiveness. God is so willing to forgive us that in order to become a Christian. So this is extremely important. Anybody who claims that they are a Christian has already received if they have obeyed the gospel, they have received forgiveness. They must first acknowledge their sin. Anybody that does not acknowledge their sin can't be a Christian. Anybody who says I was pretty good before I got baptized is lying. Nobody's good. Everybody has sinned. Everybody has missed the mark. Everybody has fallen short of the glory of God, which means in order to be baptized, in order to be a Christian, you have to not only acknowledge you've missed the mark, but you have to humble yourself and receive forgiveness. So here's the thing. Before we go any further, number one. Forgiveness is so beneficial that in order to receive salvation, salvation requires that you receive it. 
Salvation requires that you receive forgiveness. Everybody that's sitting in that congregation and claims to be a child of God or a disciple of Jesus Christ is a recipient of having their sins pardoned. Now, with that understanding, that should shift the attitudes in the room. People who attack other peoples for their sins, they don't even realize they are either recipients of God's forgiveness or they are eligible to receive and they don't know it. When I read the reason why this should shift the spirit is because I believe that if I know that the Lord has forgiven me, that literally changes how I treat you. Can I put it in a different perspective? Um, I'm I'm in prison. I'm in prison. I'm I'm in for life. And the warden comes and says, you don't have any money to get out. You don't have any connections to get out. You are guilty. We caught you red handed. But today I'm going to let you go free. And it's based upon my kindness. Right. So now I get out of prison. I'm no longer in shackles. I'm no longer in chains. I don't have to live in the confines of my sin. He let me out of my sin. He freed me from bondage and the consequence of eternal punishment. I was supposed to be in there for life. And he says, today you can go free. As I'm walking out of the prison, that changes how I treat the other prisoners that I'm walking by. I see other people in, in their cells. I see other people crying or hurting themselves. Matter of fact, as I'm walking down the aisle, as I'm walking down the hallway, I see some people who have done me wrong while I was in my own cell. While I was in my while, while I was in prison with them, I see some other people who've hurt me and wounded me. But because I've been pardoned, Somebody says, Brother Williams, you don't understand what they did. But hold on. Before we talk about what other people have done, I need to focus that I've been set free. I've been pardoned. I don't have to live in prison. Any. I don't have to live in guilt. I don't have to live in sorrow. I don't have to remind myself every year of what I've done. The Lord says, I want to read it again. The Bible says, let the wicked forsake his way, the unrighteous man his thoughts. What that means is if you would be willing to leave that life and turn unto the Lord, if anybody right now, you don't have to live in sin. If you would be willing to turn to the Lord and give your life to the Lord. The Bible says he will have mercy upon him and to our God and he will abundantly pardon your sins. Today you can be set free. Now anybody who's talking anybody who claims that they're on their way to heaven you know all the people in worship service and they're rocking back and forth say they're marching they're marching to Zion. Anybody who claims that they're marching to Zion, every single one of them has been abundantly pardoned and let off that sale. And you know what? The only thing we're doing in this life as we're walking down the hallway on our way to the Lord, we're seeing other people in their sales. We're seeing other people who hurt other people and they've hurt you. But because I'm free, I want to let you know that changes how I treat you. I'm not even supposed to be out my cell. 
Matter of fact, there are some people as you're walking down the hallway uh, unto the Lord, there are some people who grab you and hurt you and they spit on you and they do certain things. While you're in the hallway, don't you ever forget you're free though. You were supposed to stay in your cell. You're free. And sometimes we like to mull over the offenses of other people who are chained and you're free. My first point, in order to go to heaven, you have to humble yourself and receive forgiveness from, from the Lord. That's, that's a benefit. Uh, next scripture I want you uh, to go to is Jeremiah. Jeremiah chapter 31. And in Jeremiah chapter 31, I want you to see this. And let us, let us look at verse 34. And they shall teach no more every man his neighbor and every man his brother saying, know the Lord, for they shall all know me from the least unto the greatest of them, says the Lord, for I will forgive their iniquity and I will remember their sin no more. In order for anybody to be saved, you have to be willing to receive the forgiveness of the Lord. Do you know how many Christians are walking around beating themselves up for what they did in 1989? Do you know how many fathers and how many mothers are, are punishing themselves for how they raised their children in the 90s? Do you know how many people live in guilt there may be some of you right now under the sound of my voice, you're living in guilt. You have to receive. Somebody says, Brother Williams, I want you to break down forgiveness, but we don't we don't talk about this aspect of forgiveness enough. Christ forgives you. And you're you're week in and week out, year in and year out, talking about sins he remembers no more. <laughs> The problem with some of us is we don't have enough faith that we are forgiven. I know where you want me to get to. How do you deal with somebody who hurts you? We're going to get to that in a minute. But maybe the problem that we have in forgiving other people is that we're refusing to receive the forgiveness of Jesus Christ. Now, if you won't receive the forgiveness of Jesus Christ, if you're doing a bad job of forgiving the uh, of receiving the forgiveness of Jesus Christ, you're probably doing a bad job of forgiving other people because you don't realize or recognize or you refuse to acknowledge how he abundantly pardoned you have been forgiven. So you walk around. He's freed you from your prison. You shut the doors back. There's no lock on it. So, so you're in prison and in your cell, you've shut the door and you're refusing to leave your cell and you're pouting in your, in your room saying, I don't know why I did what I did and I messed up and I hurt so many people. And the Lord is looking at you through the bars saying, why are you in there? I forgave you long ago. And you're trying to remind Jesus of what he remembers no more more I want to tell you mother maybe you could have been a better mother you could have been a better husband you are not the best wife <laughs> you are not the best wife you could have tried harder as a husband you did some stuff, but you know you didn't give your marriage the best of it. I'm telling you, like, you could have been a better elder. You, you could have been a better example for the women at the church. You could have served more vigorously in your time. Now you're you're at an age where you can't get around and do the thing. And you look back and say, I robbed God. I don't care what you've done. You've had too many one night stands. You got high too much. You hurt too many of your friends. You were not the best friend. You lied too much. Lie, lying one time is too much, but, but you lied so much you ruined relationships. 
nobody trusts you. Like, you got her pregnant. You ruined your family. Your children don't talk to you. What I'm trying to say is you made a lot of mistakes. I'm not trying to downplay the impact of sin. Sin has, has years and years and financial and emotional damage that sin. But in order to be saved, you got to receive. I'm trying to move on to part two, uh, to, to number two, but I just feel in my spirit. I got to tell somebody. He forgives you. I got to tell somebody he forgives you. Let, let me let me say it just a few times and then I'll move to, to, to number two. God wants to forgive you. He wants to remember it no more. God wants to forgive you. He wants to remember it no more. You keep holding on to something he wants to let go of. And maybe the reason you cannot accomplish what God wants you to accomplish because you only feel good when you punish her. Some of us are not happy because God's punishment was less than yours. You would have punished yourself longer and, and more harshly. And God forgave you. God forgave you so quick that he forgave you faster than you forgave yourself. And the Lord has moved on and you're stuck because you, you keep coming up with ways to punish yourself. This internal punishment spills over to how you treat other people. This is the reason why some people can't forgive because if you can't receive well, you probably don't give well. Let's move to, to number two. The, 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 the second benefit of forgiveness is found in Proverbs chapter 28. I want us to look at Proverbs uh, chapter 28, and I want us to look at one verse. Let's look at verse 13. The second benefit to forgiveness is prosperity. Prosperity. Forgiveness is connected to prosperity. I just want to get that in your spirit. For some of you, you should celebrate, you should shout. The Lord wants to forgive you. And, and, and one of the reasons why forgiveness is, is so beneficial to the spirit and the soul is because you really cannot prosper without it. Some of you are delaying your own prosperity because you choose not to receive forgiveness or give it. Let's look at the text. The Bible says, he that covereth his sins shall not prosper. That's Bible. If we just stick at the text, I want this scripture to be in your spirit. The person that covers his sins shall not prosper. So here's, here's the connection between confession and prosperity. There's confession, forgiveness, and prosperity. Jesus says, if you would just be honest with me and just state the truth, some of you, you're lying to yourself, you're lying to your husband, you're lying to your wife, you won't be honest with your family, you won't be honest with, as painful as it is, you're killing your own prosperity. You're, matter of fact, some of you, you're transferring prosperity for, for false peace. As long as nobody knows, nobody's angry, and I, I'll, I'll take this to my grave, you have forfeited where God could have taken you for a lie and the covering of sin so that you can have temporary peace. I want to let you know, but on Judgment Day, the books will be open and all will be explained. Lying is going to cause you to suffer in the afterlife. It ain't even worth it. I'd rather tell the truth now and hurt your little feelings. And you may never want to talk to me again. You may never, you may never want to uh, uh, fool with me ever again. I would risk our relationship to tell the truth so that 
I've been in situations where somebody thought I was lying and I said, hey, listen, you are not that important to me to be lying. I had to tell somebody that. You lying. Wait a minute. You think I'm lying because I want y'all to think highly of me? Hey, my reputation can go all the way down to the mud. I don't have to lie to you because I understand the consequences of lying. So we don't ever have to talk again. But you're not. I want y'all to go. I want y'all to tell people this. You're you're not that important to me for me to lose my relationship with God or forfeit what he has for me. Now, some people want to be lied to. But the Bible says he that covereth his sins shall not prosper. You don't prosper when you don't repent. You don't prosper when you don't confess. Matter of fact, those who are honest, they face the fire, but they face it head on and it doesn't last as long. Some of you are delaying your prosperity because you're keeping the lie alive, as Martin would say. You're keeping the lie alive. <laughs> Stop lying. Stop lying. The Bible says, but whoso confesses and forsakes them shall have mercy. God has mercy on the honest. That's number two. Your prosperity. The prosperity of you and your family. Is confession. Forgiveness is so beneficial. Because the Lord gives mercy to those who confess their sin and then you will prosper. You'll get back to flying like an eagle. You get back to doing those things that God has called you to do. This is why it's good to receive forgiveness. There are some people. It's a small percentage of people who your family wants to forgive you. But you don't even go around your family anymore because of your shame. You're so shame. You you are so ashamed of what you've done and how you let yourself do that. Man, I got some stuff that I've done and I said, that ain't even my character. That ain't even me. I've I've cried because I let God got down. But then you got to forgive yourself. Now, I want to say this before I move on, because we're at number two. There are some people who will be angry at how fast you forgive yourself. Don't let them people keep you in that dungeon long. Some people want you to stay in that dungeon because it makes them feel good. Some people say, hey, you need to be in that dungeon for five years. There are some of you, you repent and confess your sins and forgive yourself faster than the people you hurt. All the people you may have offended. And sometimes those people will stay angry with you and you've moved on. Sometimes you have to apologize or repent. And then sometimes you just can't be around the people you've offended because they they can't forgive you that fast. Sometimes you forgive yourself faster than them. There is no time frame on forgiveness. The, if you sin, the Bible doesn't say that you have to walk around sad for 15 years. There's no time frame on it. The Bible does say you have to repent. You have to be remorseful from the heart. Some people would like to put a image on how you are supposed to look remorseful. Hey, listen, I don't have to cry in front of you to show you that I'm sorry. And I'm not going to be crying every day. <laughs> and I'm not going to be walking around sad every day. I know what you did. Uh, you did this back in the day. Hey, I probably did. I, matter of fact, I'm, I'm trying to be like Jesus. I don't remember no more. <laughs> There are some people who rehearse their sins or their past or other people's past so much they remember the details of it. There are some people say, I probably did that, same, but I don't remember the details no more. There is no scripture that says you have to remember your old sins. Hey, it's biblical to forget. The re Someone said, how can you not remember? Because I don't rehearse. I don't practice going over and over and over. The reason why a marriage has anniversaries is so that you don't forget you're married. <laughs> hey, our anniversary is coming up. Ah, that's right. That's right. Uh, I did marry you. 
That's right. We did get we did get together. <laughs> so the reason why you have anniversaries is so that you can remember. So that you can bring those feelings back and go, oh, why do we, Brother Williams, why do we have Bible study every week? Why do we have worship service? Why do we do communion every Lord's Day, every Sunday? Why do we do communion? So he says, do this in remembrance of me because it's possible to forget. Now, if you could forget God and the Lord's Supper and his, the reason why you have to study every day so that you don't forget. Some of you are studying your sins more than you study scripture. Some of you are rehearsing the people who hurt you. You remember what they did. And if I ask you what the scripture says, you can't remember not one scripture, but you can rehearse verbatim what somebody said to you six years ago. You're studying the wrong words. Study the words of God, not the words of your enemies. <laughs> Do you know what they said to me? No, I don't remember because I don't I don't want to rehearse. Some of you, you need to stop people. You know what they said about you? Um, I don't. Matter of fact, I, first of all, don't even tell me. Don't don't even plant that in my spirit. I'm not even trying to rehearse. Number one, the benefit of forgiveness that in order to go to heaven, you have to receive. Everybody that enters into the gate of heaven has to receive forgiveness. Even Enoch. <laughs> Enoch was not sinless. God showed mercy on him and brought him in. Even Enoch has to, to receive forgiveness. Everybody receives forgiveness because no man was perfect but the Lord. And he died for our sins, right? Uh, number two, number two, the benefit of forgiveness. You can't prosper without it. The Lord will not allow you to prosper unless you exercise the rec the receiving of forgiveness and the extending of it which moves us to number three james chapter five and i want to look here in one verse in james chapter five In James chapter 5 and verse 16, confess your faults one to another. Confess your faults. Confession is there. Confess your faults one to another. Then the Bible says, pray one for another. That means somebody made a mistake. They confessed it. The church tells us to pray. Why? Look at the text. That you may be healed. Why, why do they need to be healed? Because sin wounds you. Making mistakes wounds you. The Bible is giving you the recipe. Confess. The, confess your faults one to another. Stop lying to the people who hurt you. Stop lying to the people you hurt. Once confession, then the Bible says pray. Because healing is also divine. And then the Bible says that you may be healed. If anybody should be able to receive the faults of people, it should be the church. Look what the scripture says. The effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man avails. That's that prosperity avails much, which means if if the righteous will pray over your faults, you begin to prosper. Not only prosper, but if uh, James chapter five, verse 16 says healing can then take place. You know why we have so many people walking around hurting? Nobody's praying for them. We remind people of their sin. Oh, you, you, you know what she used to do. You, you, you know him. You know, he, he, he the one that did that and such and such. Remember. He used to do that. She, she used to. We, we identify people by their sins. Sometimes we identify whole churches by people's sins. You know that church where they were doing stuff over at that church, and you, you know what they. We, we like to remind people of how they have fallen. And it's so funny. It's so hypocritical. You don't want nobody doing that to you. 
as you're hearing me right now, some of you are not healed. Some of you are hurting because you're scared. What if somebody finds out? I'm going to lose everything. And the Lord already promised you, I'll make sure you prosper after this. You got to be willing. You got to be grown and mature enough to take the punishment so that you can get back to the healing and prosperity. And where God, matter of fact, prosperity means I'm taking you further than you would have been. Sometimes after sin and, and you confess and repent, sometimes God will elevate you further than, your, than, than where you were before you made your mistake. You don't even realize what God is willing to do for you. Abundantly pardon you. <laughs> you don't even know how you can be made whole. Some of you are crying every day. Now, I want to say this. Sometimes confessing your faults one to another doesn't mean people will forgive you. It means the Lord will. So I want to say that sometimes people don't forgive you, but the Lord will. So somebody says, well, what's the what's the point? They won't forgive me. Sometimes they won't. Sometimes you got to chalk that up. Sometimes people won't forgive you. But if you take it to the Lord, he'll forgive you. And while they are holding on to a grudge, the Lord will prosper you over them. And that may not even be what you want, but the Lord will heal you. Now, you may have suffered the consequences. You've lost that relationship. They won't talk to you again. Um, that the marriage may be over. Your children may not want to be around you anymore. That may be possible. That might happen. It doesn't mean your life is over. And it doesn't mean you have to beat yourself up for the rest of your life. All right. So, so, so number three. Forgiveness is about healing. And when you hold on to other people's offenses, you delay your healing. And when you choose to refuse forgiveness, you delay your healing. Forgiveness is about healing. Have you noticed in all of the points that have been made thus far? It has nothing to do with how wonderful or great the other person is. If somebody has hurt you, you forgive them not because they're great. You, f you forgive them because you can't heal until you do. I want to connect to that with this prosperity. Let's look at Matthew chapter 6. Let's study together. Matthew chapter 6. Let's look at the, what the word of God says. Matthew chapter 6. And let's look at verse 14. Forgive. Matthew chapter 6. And verse 14. For if you forgive men their trespasses. Now this is Jesus talking. And Jesus says, now listen. I'm not even asking you. What they did to you. We like to tell what. And sometimes we centralize what people did to us. And we 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 pump it up. And oh, they did this. And they may have. Some of you have been wounded. Some of you are hurting right now. If you notice, there's no place in the scripture where the Lord asks you, what did they do to you? Regardless of what they've done, the Bible says... For if you forgive men their trespasses, your heavenly father will also forgive you. Think about that. I want you to meditate on that for a second. For if you forgive men their trespasses, your heavenly father will also forgive you. You know why I want to hurry up and forgive you? The reason why I want to hurry up and forgive you is because I know my sins. I'm fully aware of my sins. For me to find out that my sins are forgiven when I forgive you yours. Listen, I'm not going to allow you to keep me out of heaven. <laughs> Brother Williams, I'm so sorry. I should have never. Hey, listen, I already forgave you last night. You ain't had to even worry about it. Well, can we hang out again? Mm, maybe, probably not. But I want to let you know. Let me let's let's define forgiveness. Forgiveness, 
I don't require for you to pay me back. That's what forgiveness is. Now, restitution is you hurt me. You need to pay me back. I don't I don't require when I forgive you, you don't have to do anything. You don't have to to keep apologizing week in and week out. Now, there are some of you who, for instance, there are some of you who are married and your spouse is hurt. Now, if you have offended, hurt or wounded your spouse, you can ask for forgiveness. That doesn't mean that there's restoration. So I just want to make this very clear. There's a big difference between forgiveness and restoration. There are some of you, your relationships and romantic relationships have ended because you did apologize, but you didn't do the work to restore because you say, I didn't know what to do. Or, uh, you know, I, I felt like I had, I kept apologizing. Why didn't they forgive? People do forgive you. They just don't want to be around you anymore. And there's no sin to that. You don't let anybody make you feel guilty. And, and if you have anybody ever make this statement to you, uh, you, you supposed to be a Christian. I am a Christian. I did forgive you. I just don't want to be around you anymore because you're a repeat offender. And and I forgive you. I realize that when I'm around you, you repeat behaviors. So I'm going to actually distance myself from you so you can have a chance to go to heaven. Because Lord forbid, if you repeat your offense and the Lord returns, you ain't going to make it to heaven. I stopped being around you so you can have a chance to go to heaven. I want y'all to think about it from that perspective. When I'm around you, you keep taking advantage of me. When I'm around you, you keep wounding me. When I'm around you, you keep lying to me. I don't want you to lose your soul. So I'm not kicking it with you no more. Don't let anybody make you feel that forgiveness means restoration. The relationship may have be may have been destroyed, but forgiveness can easily be extended. What is forgiveness? I don't require for you to pay me back for what you did. I forgive you. I'm not looking for you. I'm not looking for you to call. I'm not looking for you to give the money back. I'm not looking for you to fix anything. Now, if you're in a marriage and you want, if you're in a marriage or a relationship with a family member or a romantic relationship and you did something wrong, hey, forgiveness is not enough. I just want to let you know. Now, forgiveness is enough to go to heaven. Forgiveness is not enough to restore the relationship. So if you hurt somebody, you not only need to ask for forgiveness, but you may have to spend some years doing some work to rebuild what you what you say you want back. <laughs> some of y'all are confused because you forgave people and then you restored them back to the position and then they hurt you again and they've hurt you so many different times. And then you use these scriptures where well, the Bible says I'm supposed to forgive. Yeah, but Jesus told Peter, get behind me. Forgive people and then reposition them. Some people have not shown themselves to be worthy to be back in that close proximity with you. This is why church members keep getting uh, uh, hurt and offended. So you're breaking your own heart. You're damaging your own spirit and you're using the scripture out of context. Some of you are forgiving people who've never repented. That's a whole nother Bible study. Listen, if you didn't repent, how can I really forgive you? Now, that means you're showing me if you didn't repent, that means you're showing me that the relationship shouldn't be restored. People who never say I'm sorry and they won't admit to what they've done. I can still forgive you, but there's no there's no room for restoration because there's a, if, if you don't have the spirit to ask for forgiveness or even acknowledge what you've done, that lets me know, number one, you have pride. There's no humility in your spirit. And there is a demonic spirit in you. And the Bible says, make no room for the devil. For me to let you back in my life or home or whatever the case may be, I'm making room for the devil to, to create more scars. The reason why some of you can't heal is because you lack the wisdom and discernment to reposition people. Whole nother Bible study. But if you, verse 15, but if you forgive not men their trespasses, neither will your father forgive your trespasses. You got to forgive. 
There is no prospect. You cannot move forward. There is no salvation. There is no prosperity. And you delay your own healing when you don't forgive. So here's what the Lord is watching. The Lord knows you got hurt. He's watching to see if you will forgive. Now, some of us, we fake like we forgive. We, we, we tell people we forgive them. Then we get on the phone and we talk about what they did to us to 100 people. You lie. You're a liar. You gave the appearance that you forgave them and then you dog them behind their back. God will forgive them and, and send them on to heaven and you will be restricted from going to heaven because you didn't forgive. Brother Williams, you don't know what they did to me. They may have done something really heinous, but because they repented, he remembers their sin no more. Not only will God not... Um, will charge you for being unforgiving, your sins remain. I need all my sins forgiven. So guess what? I'll, I'll, I'm not holding any grudges. I'm going to let it go. I want to move to our last one. Our last one is Acts chapter 3 and verse 19. Acts chapter 3 and verse 19. In Acts chapter 3 and verse 19, the Bible says, Repent ye therefore, and be converted, that your sins may be blotted out. Repent, be converted, commit yourself back to God. Now, some of you right now, you may be living in sin. You're living with someone that's not your husband. You're engaged in activities that bring shame to God. Some of you uh, are intentionally and purposely uh, skipping worship service and not giving your offering unto God. You're not giving your service or your gifts to God. Some of you are abusive with your with your hands. Some of you are abusive with your mouth. Some of you are hurtful. Some of you are mean. Some of you, you stay angry. Some of you are jealous and envious and all. He says, repent. And if you repent and be converted back to God, that your sins may be blotted out. When the times of refreshing shall come from the presence of the Lord. The fourth benefit of forgiveness is refreshing. Repent, the, therefore, be converted that your sins may be blotted out. When the times of refreshing shall come from the presence of the Lord and he shall send Jesus Christ, which before was preached unto you. It's refreshing. That word refresh means a breath of fresh air. It means to catch your breath. It means it means a breath of fresh air. It means to breathe again. It means to recover you. It means that you've been running for a long time. You lost your breath. Forgiveness is to rest and gather yourself so that you can start again. The reason why some of you are tired and weary and broken is because you're out of breath. It's because you don't exercise forgiveness. I want to say this before we close. Forgiveness is daily. It is the reminding that you have been let out of your cell. God has forgiven you, which changes how you treat other people. Are you mad at me? You know what? Actually, I, I had to let that go. Why? Because I realized what I did to Jesus. And Jesus won't let mine go until I let yours go. Jesus won't let your sins go until you let their sins go. I want to say that again. Jesus won't let yours go. Until notice everybody got to let go. Everybody got to let go. Christianity is so healthy that it forces you to let baggage go. The reason why some of us go to counseling is actually because of lack of forgiveness. Not all, you know, we there are many different reasons to go to counseling. One of the reasons that some people go to counseling. It's because they won't forgive. You refuse to let stuff go. 
you could see somebody who hurt you a long time ago and you growl when you see them. Uh, you got to let it go. <laughs> Uh, it's affecting you. It's you. You you're leaving early. You you show up late. You um, your whole spirit is impacted when you see them because you won't forgive. Some of you won't forgive, and you got the wrong information. You so angry You refuse to talk to them You never even got the full side of what happened So actually Your unforgiveness Some of you Are refusing to forgive Things that never happened Because you let your emotions And your anger go too far so you refuse to even talk with them or sit down and find out what really happened. So now you're in danger of losing your soul and God keeping you out of heaven over something that never happened to you. That's mind blowing to me. <laughs> That's mind blowing. On judgment day, the Lord comes to you and says, the reason why you're not going to get in is because you refuse to forgive, forgive somebody who actually never did it to you. It was actually somebody else or it was a complete misunderstanding <laughs> and you held on to something or a narrative that never really happened. So now because you just you show that you are not willing to forgive now i have to judge you for all of the sins that i wanted to let go but i couldn't let go because you didn't want to let go god has all your sins in his hand and he says i don't even want to hold these well well lord jesus why are you holding my sins because you won't let go of theirs and the Lord is whispering to you right now. I don't know who I'm talking to, but maybe the Lord is whispering to you right now. Could you please let it go? Because I'm carrying stuff that is I don't even want to hold on to because you won't let go. You won't let go of what your mother did to you and what they and what they did to you. They did it to the flesh, but the Lord is going to give you a new body. He's going. God will refresh you. He says the damage they did to you and your body and they hurt you out in heaven. I'm going to let that body go back to the dust. I'll give you a new body and I'll give you a new mind and a new heart. You won't even have to carry those scars. I'll make you over. But right now you got to let theirs go so I can let yours go. And please don't sit here and act like you don't have yours. So right now, I want God to forgive me of all my sins. But I also know, according to scripture, in order for him to forgive me, it's on me. I thought I was going to try to convince God to forgive me. I don't have to convince God to forgive me. He told he tells me how he will forgive me. When I start forgiving other people. Hmm. So. For anybody who's ever hurt me. Damaged me. Lied on me. Whatever. Don't even matter. I forgive. I'm not holding it against nobody. I pray God hears me right now. Lord, I don't want to hold. Lord, please see my heart. I don't want to. You, you can say this with me too. Lord, I don't want to hold nothing. I forgive. Lord, right now, give me the wisdom. That after I forgive. That you give me the wisdom to move with wisdom and discretion amongst these relationships so that I can put myself in a position to minister and not keep being wounded. Not not to continue to be hurt. 
Lord, teach me to forgive like you. To be forgiven means you've been offended. You cannot go through this life without being offended. But you can go through this life not staying offended. I don't I don't wish to see anybody who hurt me punished. I'm not wishing anything bad on them cuz I don't want nothing bad to happen to me. I forgive. I pray you forgive too. Your story of your pain is not greater than heaven. And you and everybody knowing how they hurt you is not worth you losing your mansion robe and crown. Stop announcing other people's sins. Sins they may have repented of and God already forgave them. So now you're rehearsing something that the Lord is not even listening to because he forgave. The Lord is willing to forgive. Are you? You want to be like Christ? You really want to be like Christ? Start here. Forgive the child molesters, the adulterers, the fornicators. Forgive those who had children out of wedlock or took the family's money and got high. Forgive those who stolen. Forgive those who abused their children or abused their husbands or their wives. Forgive those who lied to you. Forgive those who left you out to dry. Who abandoned you. Who didn't claim you. Forgive those who didn't love you. Because you're going somewhere. And where you're going is far greater than what you've been through. Where you're going is far greater than what you've been through. I pray God heals your heart. And I pray he gives you the strength to forgive. Love, replace your anger with love. Wake up every morning and say, I choose to love. I don't want to choose anger. I don't want to cho choose bitterness. I don't want to choose regret today. I want to receive forgiveness and I want to administer it. Thank you for tuning in. I pray this will bless you. I want to thank all of those all over the world who tune in week in and week out. You support this ministry right now. If this has been a blessing, you can see on the screen, you can sow a seed into this ministry. I pray that um, God will bless you for those who give from the heart. Thank you for praying for this ministry. Thank you for sharing, liking and spreading this all over the world. I'm humbled every time I receive messages or messages from you. I, I read them. I want to let you know I read them. Thank you so much. Um, some days I have bad days and I get some of your messages and it lifts my spirit. Thank you for reminding me that this is God's business and, and not my own. God bless. Hey, listen, we are here to heal, to help and restore. Be blessed.